Just introduce yourself. Um, Stephen Pollock. I'm driver of uh, car number 67 in the Scottish Pro Kart Championship. And uh, it's going to be a track walk. So, uh, coming off the, the last corner into the, the pit straight, which is uh, really fast, flat out all the way, straight down, straight lining it to the, the exit. And the entry of the, the turn one, which is a, a, a lovely 90 degree right hander. Very short rundown when you're in a car, very long when you're walking. Where's the apex for this corner? Uh, but this one, it's just, this one's just straight line. Straight line? Uh, straight line the middle. through. Yeah. So you want to be right over on the outside of the track uh, for your entry to this corner. Yeah, keep it on the left hand side. You want to carry your speed through here quite a lot. Do you use uh, the brakes? I just lift off the throttle a little bit just to kind of settle the car. Early-ish apex, not too, not too late, uh, and in the middle of the corner. You use so you use somewhere middle of the apex and then you head to the left. And yeah, right to the left of the track, but remembering to get yourself over to the right for the, the left-hander that's next, which is turn two. So when you're driving it, you can feel this bump here, and it's normally a good indication to start lifting off and slowing down uh, for the next corner. And then you're just foot back on the throttle and hitting the late, late apex on this corner. Uh, but as you can see, the white line around the kerb is a general indication of where you want to be on the exit. Using all the track on your exit, using the, the rumble strip on the exit here, the rumble kerb, and trying to avoid going off the track. Just got another a long straight into the, the roundabout, which is probably one of the fastest uh, fastest corners on the track. As you can see, it's just self-explanatory you're straight round keeping it tight and this is flat out corner yeah flat out yeah so the curb is smooth enough to go through it yeah this curb uh, the middle of it's smooth enough anyway there's a bit of concrete here which i tend to be right over straight line it down your down the way into the roundabout keep yourself over to the left hand side here genuinely a really fast corner you can go so deep into it on the throttle as long as you you lift off a little bit so you're not running wide on the exit uh, roughly you're turning in as late as possible as late as possible yeah you're, so after being on the left you want to be really tight on the exit I'll be so coming all in. the way around you keeping somewhere just meter yeah, away yeah just keeping middle of the track and then keeping it tight on the exit and ideally I'll be aiming for or looking towards the marshal post at the back of the straight it's a good marker so you look there you that's where you want to go uh, and aiming for the, the edge of the track and getting that excellent run out of the corner down the back straight and hopefully getting a few cheeky passes at the end of it. So that's just keeping straight line, foot down all the way to the end of this straight. As you can see the the change in surface again uh, coming into this corner is where I'd normally start to lift off. So this is where you start to break? This is where I'd start to break, yeah. Personally, I like to start lifting off, I dab on the brakes and what that'll do for me is it'll bring the back end of the car out and then I'll be back in the power again, hitting the, the kerb here, it's nice and flat and smooth. Very scary as well when you get sucked into it when you go off the end because it's a drop. So uh, generally when you hit the late, late apex on that you're over at the left hand side of the track. So as you can see this is uh, not the nicest of kerbs, it's a bit... Uh, bumpy so I, tr I try to avoid this nowadays uh, I genuinely want to straight line this again uh, so your the inside kerb here which is long and smooth I tend to actually tuck a wheel down here and through this and just get a nice straight line to the the right hand side of the track for the entry to the first corner of the end field there Yeah, as you can see here, there is another uh, line where the track has been a different surface. That is another good indicator of where to start slowing down for the next corner. Not the hardest of corners, but it's uh, it's very quick and it's very fun when you get it right. There's also two apexes you can take on this corner. Uh, as you can see, it's a uh, it's another 90 degree left. So after you you've came in and you've you've broke really hard, uh, you're turning in and you want to carry the speed all the way through the corner. Uh, decreasing and decelerating with the steering uh, I, I tend to aim to get the car about here uh, not all, always on the white line uh, but then obviously with the carrying the speed you, you, you come a bit wider and you get an, an excellent cut to hit the, the second apex here 
to hit the apex on this white line here and essentially you want to be driving through the corner so I have the car turned red enough to drive straight through the corner hitting the apex here and uh, using a lot of the track on the exit but trying again not to go off the track onto this kerb and as you can see the next corner is a, a, a hairpin bend to the right so you want to get straight back over to the left hand side of the track as soon as possible this corner myself is normally just a, a lift so you're not going too fast into the corner missing the first part of the corner and paying close attention to the exit kerb and the, the apex coming onto the, the last straight essentially you'll be aiming for the, the edge of this kerb here where the white line is fed on the throttle and getting a good drive out the corner again using all the track on the exit but from here you're out the last corner of the infield big long straight down into pit bend and uh, you sort of want to have two wheels on this or if you're aiming for this then you're you're in the right ballpark it's quite a technical corner this and it can make or break your lap as I tend to find uh, it's frustrating coming out here and getting a a really good or coming through the infield and getting a really good uh, sector time and then losing it on this corner it happens more often than not what about braking sorry I forgot braking zone you're about braking on the see where it, the white line comes in here and you're actually a couple wheels off off this to the side of the track and I tend to keep it quite tight through here so you just like Dab on the brakes. A, a little dab on the brakes, yeah. Uh, you can carry a lot of speed through this corner, and, uh, uh, and if you brake too much, you do lose a lot, and it does hurt your lap time. Where the apex? Uh, the apex of this corner is to the middle and the end of it again. I tend to run this kerb. If I get a nice line, I can just get the car turned on the brakes again, straight in the throttle, keeping tight, running this kerb, and then straight on the exit over the start finish line. This is it. Yeah. The exit is on the left hand side. E exit on the left hand side, yep. Carrying all the speed through that. Trying to avoid this kerb here because it sucks you into the gravel. And if you go in there in a race, uh, especially with heavy pro carts, they're quite hard to get out of there. So uh, this has been uh, the track walk for Crail uh, up here and that has been essentially my, my racing line, uh, what I find works a lot but then again a lot of drivers are different so uh, don't just stick to what I've, I've done, you might find your lines better. Morning everyone and welcome to Internet Racing School or how I like to call it my channel IRS Wolf and this week I am visiting very interesting circuit um, we in Scotland and uh, we visiting another event with pro cards yes <laughs> again pro cards you know uh i don't know why, why i'm so lucky but these pro card events is something amazing you know it's um, something really interesting and uh, again i arrived here yesterday and i can say you that people here are so friendly so i think the video should be really interesting okay guys so uh 
it's just the morning everyone just arriving uh, just uh, uh, preparing their go karts for for the event uh, I don't know how many teams is gonna be but it should be really really interesting okay let's go and let's talk to the drivers about this circuit about racing line about uh, the best line breaking points turning in and let's find out as much as possible information let's go So today we'll be running the usual two 10 minute practices, we'll put the juniors out first, 10 minutes for the juniors at 10 o'clock and then we'll have 10 minutes for the seniors after that, we'll hopefully get the first race going for just after half past 10. We're running the same as last month, quick turnarounds, get the day going quickly and we'll hopefully finish for about the back of four. That'd be decent if we get away for four. Yeah, we'll hopefully try, if everybody's willing to push forward, get the day going as quick as we can. We'll be turned around for just before four-ish, hopefully the same as last month. Shouldn't be an issue, we've done it last month, so we should be able to do it again this month. Hey right, guys, track goes live at ten. Go for there. Who's well, out first? Junior's out. Junior's out first. Right. right guys, thank you very much. Chris Watson, I am the East of Scotland Pro Kart representative for the club. Uh, so that's the <laughs> title, as it were. But, uh, <laughs> uh, Today we have a East uh, Scottish uh, Kart Club Championship. Is that correct? Yes, Scot the, the East of Scotland Kart Club Scottish Pro Kart Championship. What is it in general about? We run pro karts, which you know, you you know yourself are run all over the country through BPEC and through numerous other club championships. The championship itself is ten rounds long. Uh, each round consists of six fifteen minute races. Uh, overall, the race in itself, as you've seen today, is, is close, really close, with a lot of really even driving. As everybody's ballasted to a minimum of one hundred and ninety kilos, so it means everything's very very clean cut. There's not any. Any issues, yeah. And what categories do you have here? We have uh, the senior class, uh, which is divided into two subcategories, which is elite and clubman. We also have the junior class, which run is for kids, uh, the kids up to the age of 16. The uh, junior class is twin Honda 160s. Uh, so that's also a great introductory into pro karting moving from cadets, it's the ideal stepping stone to senior pro carts. So there are two classes we're on. What's your name, sorry? Jack. Jack, and uh, your team? Uh, Apollo Racing. Apollo Racing. Can, can you tell me about the, um, first of all, what is the name of the circuit? <laughs> well, it's just Crail. Crail? Yeah. yeah. So can you tell me the hardest part of the Crail for you? Mm. I don't know, probably the infield bit's quite tricky, you've got to get that right, you know. What can you say about corner number one? It, it, it's a uh, flat out corner, yeah? Uh, well, you're lifting off a little bit. Lifting off a little yeah, bit? Yeah, just a wee bit. Um, and you're just, you're not touching the, the curve, and then you're right over for the second corner, braking quite hard straight and then diving in. 
corner number three, that's one Roundabout. long roundabout. Yeah, that's really yeah. good, that corner. So again, you're out quite wide. Um, you're cutting in, you're almost cutting cutting the grass. Do you enter it uh, flat out? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. You're, pretty much. You're not really breaking there. Uh -huh. You're kind of lifting off and using the kind of rubber on the track to kind of grip you around. You're so, on, so on and off the throttle the whole time. So and you're, you're letting, it drift, you're letting you, it drift yourself out down to the straight. Isn't so the, we the, have a the, corner number four, yeah? Yeah. So, so that's the straight, that's on the straight. After straight, yeah. So do you use a lot of brakes there? Because uh, the corner is not there, tight, there's, there's isn't actually it? like a kind of line on the track. It's like a bump on the track. Yes. Uh, where the little uh, the shed is, uh, I use that as kind of a guide to the braking point. Uh, and then again, throwing it in, and uh, you, you, you can actually ride the curb round. You can take quite a bit of that curb, and it lets you throw you out to the other apex. And you can actually hit that other apex on the way out, and that sets you up nicely for the infield. Hairpin. The hairpin, yeah. Do you, do you so, touch both apexes then? Um, what I tend to do is again right right out wide, mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm, that's probably the most aggressive corner. Where you're literally throwing it in. Uh, I, I tend not to hit the first one, uh, but you can touch the second one on your way out. It's kind of stay in the middle of the track, and you're out wide again for the last the second last corner. And uh, do you, do you break in the, in the right uh, in the next uh, in the right hand side hairpin? Uh, the, the the second hairpin. Yeah, the second no, hairpin. No, 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 you're not breaking. No breaks there, at no, all. No, you're just, just as I say, because you, you, you're slowing the cart down uh, initially, and you're that when you aggressive, you throw the back end in, uh, and that gives you the moment, momentum to go around. Uh, and you, you kind of see, you can take a little bit of that second curb if you want. So you're touching only second. You can curb. do, yeah, and then it. You, you like you're not touching it, but you drive as close yeah, as possible. Yeah, you're quite close to it. Yeah, you can almost miss it with your front and hit the, the your back. And the last corner level, before they start finish. Again, you're out quite wide. There's a line on the track as well. You can see yeah. um, where I like to use that as a breaking point. No, I don't really tend to brake that hard. It's just um, you're flat out really. But then you you do steady the cart with a brake, and then again you just kind of you're rolling the cart round. Uh, you can you can take a lot of that curb as well at the very end. And yeah, and again like you should be drifting out. The momentum you should drift, let the cart drift out. Don't try and stay in drift out and then that's you will start finish like that. starting from turn number one how is the best way to drive around turn number one uh, so on the way into turn number one you've got a wee lift to the throttle um, sometimes we dab a brake and then just back flat out again and um, drive down to turn two heavy braking zone there's a small bump on the track just as you hit that you just want to dive on the brakes sometimes if you get it wrong with the way the bump is it sort of unsettles the cart a little no, bit um, and yeah left. Late, late turning in um, ah, it's just a sort of standard apex really, um, you've got to be careful on the way out there's uh, quite a deep gravel trap so if you clack, catch that you see the dust go flying. Uh, there's about a hundred different lines around the roundabout. <laughs> I drive the cart quite hard into the corner and mm -hmm. then you've got a dab of brakes. You don't need a lot especially in these, not, not as much as say if you're in a two stroke or something going that wee bit quicker. Um, but yeah on the, on the, on the brakes, the dab of brakes sort of maybe a quarter of the way into the turn and then you're right back on the throttle, quick corner. Um, but there is a couple of lines, especially if you're following somebody or trying to pass somebody. Which which one you prefer? Uh, see, I quite like to just drive in uh, quite quite shallow on the way in, and then just hold a really nice tight line. But see, so you can carry a bit more speed and sort of almost drive right around the middle of it. If the corner number four after long straight. Yeah, it's it should be very heavy braking. Yeah, this is probably the the hardest braking point on the circuit. Um, certainly, it should fastest point. It's, it's, it's a good overtaking spot, um, but it's a tough overtaking spot. It's too late on the brakes and you go wide, you end up on the gravel on the other side on the exit and then uh, the person's just going to come straight back past you. So, even think so you it. exit from corner number four on your left, you stay on the left yeah. and you're making straight line all yeah. the way to corner number yeah, five six. So into then, the braking point. Yeah, yeah? So then field here, back out as wide as you can. So you know, you're going to hit the first apex on the way in um, and then just like a nice, nice arc and then hit the second apex on the way out and then just try and use as much of the track as you can right out to the um the curb if you touch the yeah if you touch the curb um it'll just pull you nicely across to the left um and then you've got a, you've got the right hander so it's a tiny dab because you've not tiny you're, you're carrying a bit of speed out the infield but it's not um excessive so you know it's just sort of dab on the brakes and, and get it turned in and, and around you go and it's a uh, somewhere middle apex as well yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of like another sort of double apex situation. Oh, it's situation. a double apex, yeah, double, um, sorry. It's, it, the way that the corner is, um, i trying to think as I'm doing it, but yeah, I'd, I'd say quite an important corner. And the, the last corner, the, because that one yeah. is, looks very fast corner. And the, Yeah, it's quite fast. You, you, wanna, have, you have like a narrow in and wide out. Yeah, so you want to try and take as much of the curb on the inside really as you can get away with. Mm -hmm. um, more curb you can take, the quicker you'll get through the corner for sure. <laughs>
is the name of this circuit? This is uh, the East of Scotland Cart Club Crail Circuit. So Crail Circuit. Crail, yeah, named after the, the village just along there. So yeah, uh-huh. it's a small fishing village. So this the site itself was formerly a World War Two airfield. Uh, we took ownership, as it were, of this section of the airfield in the, in the late sixties, and the club has grown since then to what you see today, uh, which is a, a thriving. Little cart circuit, you know, it's, it's good, it's good for our Today we had about, what, um, 10, 10, 10 drivers in... Uh, uh, at 11 seniors, 11 in the seniors, seniors and yeah. 4 juniors. 4 today. juniors. And uh, how many in the total event can uh, manage? We can run up to about 30 carts. 30 in the carts. senior class, yeah. We can in theory run the same for the juniors as well, so theoretically we've got about a maximum capacity of, uh, of 30 carts, so... Yeah. Okay, let's introduce first of all. What's your name? Uh, my name's Robert. Connor Whitman. Brandon Castle. And Cruz. 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 Okay. Okay, guys. So we're gonna show the racing line around the yes. track. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the corner number one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is your best? Uh, what is your favorite Formula One driver? Um, I quite like Lewis Hamilton. Vettel. Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton. Okay, one, two, three, and Vettel. Tell me where we approaching corner number one. Inside. Left hand side. Uh, I, I normally tap the brakes and then go around the corner. If you can go and show us where is the apex. So this is where the apex? Yes. So can you say it's after the apex? Uh, yes. Do you move to the left hand side? Uh, yes, yeah, so normally we'd come over to about... <laughs> come about here yeah. So for the next left hander you cross the... Uh... Yeah, we crossed over back to the right. Um, so, um, then we tap the brake and then like you want to go wide on the corner because if you don't go wide then you've not got any speed just like touching here and then up. so you keep the throttle all around that's how you get the speed uh-huh. and then you get speed all the way down there where's the turning in point for round the bar? let's go all together i would turn personally about here about here ah. and I'd lift off the throttle about probably probably where that apex is here and then you keep it tight round but I'll kind of normally like full throttle it's probably my hardest corner because it's really hard to struggle like to get round because you want to stay tight because if you go wide, then you'll just spin off. So you need to stay tight, but then you don't want to go too quick or you'll just lose the wheel. Tell, yeah, tell the dad. story how your dad get your go-kart. <sighs> so, my dad just said it's a surprise. Uh-huh. And then we went to the garage and then, and then they opened the door and it was a big uh, surprise for me and I was... What was it? A go-kart. Wow, the 160cc? Uh, I was this is quite a fast corner. Uh, I'm not breaking about the same places the cruise is breaking that yellow marker and um, white marker there. Yeah. And uh, I normally come in tight and my front, um, my right hand, the wheel, is normally up on this curve because if you notice it's like a it's like huge slam here so it's normally like up the right and then uh, And you exit this corner at the left hand side, yeah? Yeah, no, when this apex starts here, that's when I start to come out. And if then you come out earlier, then it's Break hard and then just turn it. Turn in, yeah? What about, do you touch both apexes here? Mm, you, you try not to touch them like white stuff because it like lifts you up from the ground and you have to go back down. Uh huh. You like judder. This corner I really hate because I always muck it up every time I turn. So I try going the outside and um, I take I take it wide and hit that apex and go on outside. So you take wider and you hit the the second yeah. latest apex, second one. Yeah. 
Nice one. Okay, we have a straight now. Let's go. So if you if you come down here fast, you can get more speed going around back the front straight. Mm -hmm. And then you don't hit them because you can um, make your car go like back. And unsettle it, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let's speak about the last corner at this well, circuit. I would stay on the outside coming down the straight and I normally cut in this corner sooner than later because mm -hmm. I feel like I get more speed when I come out and then I stay on the outside and just go. Yeah, can you tell me um, starting from corner number one, uh, how you drive through the corner number one? Yeah, just sort of keep, try and keep to the outside of every corner, you know, and then drive to the apex and cut in. That's how I do it. It's yeah. difficult when you're not driving, but uh, <laughs> I'm not as good as these guys. You better ask Chris. No, Watson. I asked them already. <laughs> these are the hymns. This is the day of my battle anthems. Ballery. Ballery. And um, what is the name of this circuit? Uh, Crail. Crail. Yeah. Uh, what, why is it called East Scot East uh, Scotland Scot Car Club. It owns a basic track, runs a full track. So they've got the full championship. Ah. Uh -huh. and, and we race within their track. Yeah. And um, uh, what can you tell me about this track? Is that is that, is that, is that a difficult track? It's technical, it has its tight corners, has its fast corners, so it's a mix between fast and slow. It's, so, uh, it's a big technical. I've seen the drivers, it's quite difficult to overtake here. Yes. Uh, uh, some drivers find it hard, some drivers find it easy. It's all down to how, how they manage the corner. And well, you what do you think about it? <laughs> I find it hard. To the fast guys at front, I find it hard. Yeah. Slow guys, you find it some, somewhat kind of pick your moment and make your move. Uh -huh. But the circuit is so quick, so you have like two, two overtaking points? Maybe three main overtaking points at full track. Three? Three. So it's a heavy braking zone that you turn to, end of the straight, and an infield, it's usually. Yeah, that, that hairpin, that uh, first one. Yeah. I'm actually much better in the wet than I am in the dry. Oh, I, really? I really prefer the wet weather driver driving around this track. Why is that? Um, the cart responds so much nicer on the wet on weather. The wet weather. Um, this is an older chassis, this is a 2003 LRG, and I find um, in, the, in the wet weather conditions, it's the back end is planted. It just does not want to kick out. But I find in the in the dry, um, it's a bit, it understeers a bit compared to some of the the more modern carts, and um, it's a little bit less responsive. Is that because of the chassis softness, or, or? I just think it's just because um, the the chassis, you know, it's an older chassis. It's a bit more rigid. It doesn't flex as much. Mm -hmm. Is it Honda engines? No, no, it's it's a Honda clone. Is a Honda clone. So this this costs one hundred and twenty pounds for a brand new engine. So we one don't, engine. One engine, one twenty. So it's two hundred and forty pounds for two engines. Are you allowed to use them in a the pick? No. No. We don't do re, we don't do rebuilds with these. We Got run it. them and then we fling them away and we get two new engines because one hundred and twenty pound each. There's no much point in even spending the time opening and you know taking them apart. How many cc they are? Same as, two, it's, it's 196, so 200 cc's. 200 cc's. Exactly the same uh, power output as 200 cc BPEC engines. However, we run um, a slightly larger jet, uh -huh. and we run this tuned exhaust. Also, we run a Mojo tyre, which is actually a junior Rotax tyre. Um, so it's a softer compound, ideal for sprint racing. The race weekend itself uh, is £40 race entry. For your £40 race entry, you get a 10 minute practice, a 10 minute qualifying, and six 15 minute races mm -hmm. if you're a senior. The juniors, it's the same cost, £40, you get your 10 minutes practice, 10 minute qualifying, and then they get six 10 minute races. 
So overall value for money when it comes to I mean forty there's nobody else in the country who can <laughs> come close to yeah to that. It's and Saturday, what are you paying Saturday? Saturday for non members is thirty pounds. Thirty pounds. If you're a member, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. It's free practice on a Saturday. Which ah, so if you uh, have a membership, you can do turn practice before the events. And turn up and practice for free. Well, sounds amazing. So <laughs> you know, get, and when you look at the cost of the memberships, you can get a, a yearly membership for an adult. It's one hundred and sixty pounds. That to, covers you for unlimited use of the circuit during the week, Monday through Friday between ten and eight at night. Due to noise restrictions, naturally we have to close up shop as it were at about eight o'clock at night. But that gives you unlimited practice during the week and also gives you one weekend of the month, which is free open practice. Uh, yeah, um, let's go karting. Can yeah. you tell a little bit about let's go karting? We have a, our let's go karting representative, Chris Smith. He runs the let's go karting on a Saturday before the pro kart event. We have a various selection of junior pros, cadet karts and also senior pros. It gives you a chance to come and have a shot, learn a little bit about what we do, learn a little bit about the classes and also get a bit of track time. So how they can get the engines if they want to run here? How they can get the engines? They would need to contact our technical representative which mm -hmm. is Grant Miller of Phoenix Racing. Uh, so Grant is your go-to man for the Villiers 200s. He's got full dyno facilities, uh, he builds the engines, you know everything can be supplied. And on, on the race day, um, who is going to be here if, if let's say something goes wrong with the engine is any representatives here on the yes, race day? Yes, usually Grant would be here unfortunately due to work commitments he couldn't make it today. Mm -hmm. But uh, Grant would usually be here on a race day. today after all these technical issues is Brendan. <laughs> Third place was Connor. <laughs> Second place, number 11, Robert. <laughs> the guy who was definitely in top form today, Cruise. Away with it. Cruise. Best efforts to kill him off at the first race. Full speed racing. <laughs> Second place today. Didn't he? Didn't he do as well as his son? Got the first, but I'm there, but. The man was definitely up the other day. Definitely a big step up in his speed. Billy. Billy.
Third place, despite all his technical issues today, 67, deck 3, Stephen. Second place, CSW. A winner, Mr. Brown, for all these things. And here it is guys, this is the end of the race day, this is the end of the filming day and this is the end of my amazing weekend in Scotland at this amazing circuit, Crail. And uh, you know what, as usually I want to say big big thanks to everyone, to organizers, to uh, marshals, uh, racing drivers, thanks a lot. People here are so friendly, they even borrow me blanket and the pillow to sleep comfortably overnight in my car <laughs> because I wasn't prepared for uh, this weekend at all. I decided to go here in the last minute, in the last moment and I didn't book any hotel, anything but I'm so happy that I haven't done it because I slept in a car and next to me was the other driver sleeping in a caravan and everything and the atmosphere is amazing. Uh, all the details for this event, for this circuit, I will leave the links, uh, Facebook pages and everything, everything in the description uh, down below. So if you're interested in this event, uh, if you're interested to buy engines, you can find the link there. If you're interested to speak uh, about this event, all the links over there, you can contact directly Chris um, and the, the, the other representative here. So you can contact them directly. Uh, you can find all the information about this event. I can tell you honestly, today, yes, it was a very small amount of drivers. Um, it was only four juniors. 11 seniors but you know what it was really amazing the the event the atmosphere and and look at this circuit just just look at it look at this location just if you can see just over there behind me there is a sea and that sea um i think it's called english sea yeah uh, so you know it's just amazing to spend time here guys seriously it's just amazing the circuit layout is brilliant i haven't driven it by myself but i can guarantee you i'll be back here and i'll drive on this circuit because i'm really i've been today i've been so excited and and uh, this is it i don't have any more words guys i'll see you next week see ya <laughs>